In for Bacharach, and that goes in! Hugo Bacharach gives Flint City a 3-2. Buckley, oh, the ball falls to Buckley. What I want with Etheridge, what a save! Welcome into the first ever MSN All-State Media Day for Girls Soccer. Jonathan Turner alongside Dan Stickrat. Ball comes in, a good hit! Effectively today here on the Michigan Soccer Network, we are launching our new division of player recruitment videos. Mario Canoe now finds Sock. Finds Sock's got a left footed banger. He shoots it! It's in! The Red Horn team flies! Granite City Food and Brewery has two Michigan locations in Troy and Northville. Serves made from scratch food brews in-house beer, and even has brunch every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. To learn more about their daily specials or to book a private party, visit GCFB.com. Make sure you head over to Granite City in Northville at the corner of 7 Mile and Haggerty or the Troy location at 16 Mile and I-75. Are you looking to play at the next level? MSN is now offering player recruitment videos. We are excited to partner with you and your family in getting you to the next level. To learn more about our packages and what we offer, head over to the michigansoccernetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a click. Now Worrell has a good cutback from him. He'll fire one, and that's going to go in! of Michigan Student Athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We were responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere in which interscholastic students can thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stand should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports. While maintaining a high level of respect for all those involved in the games. Enjoy, enjoy the game! game. take your game to the next level. Did you know that MSN is now offering player recruitment videos? Our packages include a player profile where you show your preferred positions, the club, the league or school that you play in, your current coach contact information, and more. The highlight videos could be self-submitted 15 to 30 clips that will be put into a three to seven minute long video. 
video review of your Huddle, VO, or other platforms that you might have video on, as well as for an additional charge, MSN can come out and film games for you to create those clips. Our coach evaluation process, which is also an additional charge, where we have college coaches from various levels across the United States that will review your game film and provide feedback on how to improve that film as well as also evaluating your play and what you can improve on. To learn more about our packages and what we offer, head over to the michigansoccernetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a click. Our mission is to help players take their game to the next level and reach their potential. Not only do we help develop fundamental technical skills such as ball control and tight spaces with different surfaces, dribbling at speed and changing direction, using a variety of 1v1 skills to create space, receiving on a half turn, hook turn, and out of the air, finishing off the dribbling, one touch, volleys, and headers. We help players get comfortable performing these skills at game speed with pressure and with both their dominant and non-dominant foot. In addition, we help players with their speed of play, awareness of space, defenders and teammates, and also dominate with our off the ball movement. We offer a variety of services such as one-on-ones, small groups, large groups, as well as team sessions. We have an experienced coaching staff that is professional, friendly, patient, while still holding players to high standards and holding them accountable. No matter what level you're at as a player, I'm confident we can help you get better. Over the past three years, we've built one of the best soccer-specific training facilities in the country and developed one of the most detail-oriented programs to help out. Hello, everybody. Welcome here once again into Dick By Stadium at Avondale High School in Auburn Hills, Michigan for this ECNL Boys Soccer Ohio Valley matchup as the 0506 Ohio Premier side coming in and taking on the National Soccer Club here on this Sunday afternoon, 1 p.m. kickoff scheduled time here, and we are excited to have you along for the ride. Alex Lubianski to my right. My name is Jonathan Turner, and we are excited to bring you this Boys soccer matchup, the final game of the day for us here on this Sunday afternoon, live on the Michigan Soccer Network. And uh, Alex, man, we've been uh, we've been uh, get, you know I, I would say uh, honored to get uh, some really really fun soccer games here this afternoon and morning. Uh, it, in the first matchup here earlier today, it was uh, a one nothing victory. Sorry, it was a two one victory in favor of the um, Ohio Premier side against the 07s, and then. In the last game of the 08s, they won 3 nothing, And here we are with 71 degrees. Here now, Auburn Hills, Michigan, for this third and final matchup of the day. Yeah, it's a special one. Got to love the 05, 06 age group. It's really a transitional moment where some of these guys, this will be the end of their soccer career. Some of them will go on to play elsewhere. But, <clears throat> man, right, right in the thick of some quality players, some known names. It's going to be a fantastic match, and the temperature keeps rising, and hopefully the quality of play will do so as well. But it, it'll be a tough act to follow. That 08 game, my word. Creative players, club systems, club styles, easy to identify, and this will be a lovely match. Well, we, wa we hope that you are uh, watching from near or far. Let us know where you're watching from. In this third and final game here as we, again, excited to bring this to you. So we get ready here, getting ready with our score bug. Make sure we have 45-minute half set up. We do. As we are just moments away from the start of this game. And here we are. We are officially underway here from Dick By Stadium here in Auburn Hills, Michigan. The Nationals are in the black kits going right to left on your screen. And the gray and black trim kits is Ohio Premier. In goal for the Nationals is none other than Reed Dennis. If you could help us out on the Ohio Premier side with who's in goal for them, that would be very much appreciated.
And up on this near side. That's Adriana Shoya. Shoya looking inside for Sevi Roy. Sevi Roy slots it across the mouth of the goal. Now one cleared away, but the flag did go up for offsides. Quick start, just offside. Could have been an early goal. In the comments section, you could help us out with who the goalkeeper is here for Ohio Premier. Even though there might be a number on the back of their jersey, it doesn't always necessarily align with the actual reality of who's playing on the pitch. So any help there would be much appreciated. Up this near side, and that one is cleared away. Amir was the one on the ball for the Nationals. Is this taken by Nico Demopoulos? So I'll throw this one in. All over the top and be played back by Simon Sawyer all the way back to the goalkeeper Reed Dennis. Oh, this is now Sebi Roy off that misplay. Defensively, Roy unable to get by the goalkeeper for Ohio Premier. Ill-advised header back, undercooked it, almost led to a goal for the Nats. Undercooked it, love it. Ohio Premier goalkeeper is Liam McClen. So Liam McClen, a senior who's committed to UNC Greensboro, he is a goalkeeper. So we appreciate that. Thank you very much for letting us know. Tell you what, McClen bailed him out early on that one. Sebi Roy is the reigning Mr. Soccer here in Michigan. Played his high school ball for Clarkson High School this past season. He is, I believe, still uncommitted. He has been looked at by a ton of colleges. We appreciate uh, Trey Shepard and Nathan Wilbanks for letting us know the goalkeeper is, in fact, Liam McClen. First time stopping by, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Subscribe, like this, share this with your friends and family, and we'll appreciate you coming back for more. Amir, inside. That's Jordan Klein. You can Eisenhower. Val Victorian is Jordan Klein. Pretty impressive when you think about that. This ball looking for Shoya. This will get down by the end line, and those two players get tied up, and that goes out for a goal kick. It's right. Val Victorian, Jordan Klein. It's pretty impressive if you think about that. That means you're the number one, like, person. Number, number it's one not even student, student, right? Number two. Well, and I, I do a, think that there are some students. position. And Val Victorian is something that it, it's hard to even meet one, much less have one on your side. No joke. Is. Now making the run up the pitch here is number 11, Luke Hanlon. A Lipcomb University commit. Also a senior. I'll tell you, man, this is really nice that uh, I'm getting... Uh, the, so right before the game, we were given a list of players along with the commit, who they were committing to. This is fantastic. Uh, I'd love to hear that. And with prom just around the corner and knowing where everyone's committed to go, it's just it's, it's, it's outstanding. So far, not, not much going on here since Sidney Roy had that breakaway against Liam McClen. This was slotted back across and intended for Jake Ziolo. Ziolo, a senior who's staying here in Michigan. Calvin University. I believe that's here in Michigan, Calvin. I believe so. I'll tell you what, from the early going, they play the whack, Ohio I think, right? They play the whack. <laughs> but that could be correct. This Ohio side has a fairly uh, unique system and style compared to the predecessors that we saw earlier today. And 
again, much appreciated that you take the pieces you have available and you try to put out the best product that you can. Uh, early challenges I'm seeing for their side, the connectivity between their lines seems fairly expansive and stretched on a vertical level. So you'll see their nine really drifting into space by himself when they're sitting low and defending. Not sure that they're going to be able to build out much when they fall into that. Otherwise, in their attack, when they did get forward, I don't know that their back line is getting forward aggressively enough to really impact the game and attack. Again, early going, six minutes in, but those are some of the observations. I don't know if it's a matter of fitness. I don't know if it's just early season. They're still putting it together, but we'll see how it progresses over the course of 90 minutes. So ball thrown in to Roy. Now this one will be crossed into the 18, back post, back across towards middle of the 18 and cleared away. This part of the broadcast is brought to you by Granite City Food and Brewery. Eat good, eat, drink good drinks, have good times. A shot from 50 so yards out, more like 42 yards out. And stopped by Mr. Reed Dennis. Yeah, Hanlon liked what he saw and you can't fault him. It's a tall goalkeeper, but he's a solid 15 meters off his line. He thought he could have a, a bit of a go and hey, Hit that a little bit more clean, you might snipe one there. Granite City is located at 16 Mount I-75 in Troy, as well as 7 Mount Haggerty in Northville. Check out their daily deals each day of the week. They've got unbelievable options. Tomorrow's Build Your Own Burger Day, $6.99 for a burger and fries. Can't do that anywhere nowadays to get a burger that cheap. That's good. It's a three-quarter pound patty. On Tuesday's Taco Tuesday's Pasta Wednesday, all you can eat fish fry Friday for fourteen ninety nine. You can't beat all you can eat fish and chips on Fridays. That's good all year round, by the way. That's not just like during Lent. So, <laughs> and, and I think an appetizer Thursday. So select appetizers are all priced out pretty well. So check out Granite City in Troy or in Northville. Go to gfcb.com for more information about each location for catering, private parties, and more. On the move here, National Shoya, just outside the 18, cuts to his right foot. Puts it back out wide. Demopoulos, cuts down to the end line, looking to slot this back, post off! The head off the defender, number four, that's Jos Josh Ali. But talk about a one-time finish that is a goal-saving save on the head from Ali. So intricate, so precise. The speed of play, the quality of touch. Nats, that was spectacular. And what a block off the line to keep that out of the frame. But you got to compliment the build up there. This one comes in. Oh, it's going to find its way back post. Demopoulos now. Top of the 18. Trying to finish this one, continues through traffic. Still kind of a scurry, finally cleared away. I was sure you that was right there for the Nationals along with him here. That one will go out. Last touch there by number 33, Keegan Conley at Wright State University. Boy, you Commit. can really tell that this Nats team, they are not simply visitors to the final third. At minimum, it's a lease to own arrangement. They're so comfortable in there. It's not a once in a while thing. It must be a standard to play for them where they're just able to get there and have plenty of men around the ball. Sebi Roy pulls it back. He looks a shot. It opens the score and getting his fifth goal of the weekend in the 10th minute. Electric. Electric. Sebi Roy got four goals yesterday. They call it the natural hat trick? Is that what they call that? Or is, what, 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 I think it's called the natural, natural hat trick. Four hat goals of natural hat trick. I believe is when you go uh, the foot, the head, and the opposite foot, I believe. Would oh. be what well, that he had is. four goals. So I think they call four goals in sports a natural. Is that a natural hat trick? Yeah. Wow. That's what he had yesterday, so. I'm going to need a whole term sheet from you because I, I can't keep up. That's outstanding. <laughs> We've gone all the way from the Masters to the Natural Hat Trick today. We're talking about own goals in hockey, juxtaposed with the same in football. I mean, this is incredible. Turner starts with one iPad in 2021, and next thing you know, he has words and phrases. Oh, 
We do, we do our darndest here in the 10th minute. It, as this next five minutes of broadcast is brought to you by Trivoloni Asset Man Management. Your success is our success. Your financial goals are our sole focus, and we are excited to partner with you. Visit Trivam. Dot com or call 586-665-8805. That's 586-665-8805. Or visit trivam.com. Remember, your financial success starts with a call. So 11 minutes into this one, now 12 minutes in. and Ohio needs to make use of this because from the early game flow, it looks like they're going to have to find ways to score goals and Set piece early on, maybe commit some numbers forward, take some chances, because Nats really has quality in the final third, and it's hard to believe that it will end with only one goal for them. It is hard to believe that that's the case, but it is in fact true. And This ball comes in. Last game, the 2008 did shut out the Ohio Premier side, 3-0. I do not believe the Nationals on the field behind them have lost a game today. The 2007s did lose earlier this morning by a score of two to one. Playing real tight there in the back, under pressure. And that was a fair result. I mean, it really felt Ohio had the superior side in that match. It's a good game. First time stopping by, your price of admission for our games is uh, letting us know where you're watching, who you're rooting for, what kind of food you eat, how great we are as broadcasters, whatever you, your heart's desire uh, is, uh, is w whatever you want to go. But we, we want you to be involved. You know, this is something that you can't typically do in, in, other, you know, in other broadcasts. And, and we do encourage the, the back and forth. So, uh, you know, get involved. We've already asked you to help us out with the goalkeeper situation, which we've been very much... Uh, thankful for from Trey Shepard and Nathan Wilbanks. But uh, we would very much appreciate the opportunity for you to ask questions. Let us know where you're watching. Let us know your favorite food places in, in Dublin, Ohio, where this club is located from Ohio Premier, as well as the National Soccer Club. Antonio's Pizza was something that was recommended back in game number one, so... Obviously, the question of the day still is, is, and it's one of those controversial questions, I think, uh, facing our society today is, uh, you know, pineapple or no pineapple on your pizza. <laughs> I think that is, I mean, of all the things in the world to talk about that creates controversy, I think that's the singular one in our society today. I, I think... I couldn't and, agree and, more. It's a and, global and, and issue. I, and I, and I, well, I, globally, I'm not sure how, how important pizza is, but... I, what I will say, it's definitely important here, you know, in the United States. Especially as it approaches the lunch hour. That's right. It's, we already had our pizza here this afternoon, and this one cleared away. Make its way back to Reed Dennis. Spacing is good. You can certainly see the difference between the age groups as far as spacing, anticipating the next movement of the game. Ball goes negative to the goalkeeper. The outside backs know to stay high. Center backs are dropping to the edges of the box. It's a, it's a nuanced game that they got going here. So Shoya played that ball inside towards Amir. Good win by Jackson on the far side. It's also a clear uptick in communication, both verbal and nonverbal. If you watch this game, you, you really start to pick out moments where Guys are confident and they're they're expressing it to one another. Great ball. This one goes back post. It's an open net. Back across. Now the finish. And it's 1-1. One, one. Game on, John Turner. Game on. So the finish, I believe, by was number three. I think that's, that's, no, there's no number three, so that wasn't correct. That goal, though, coming here in the 16th minute. I think it was 33 that finished it. That it was. So that goal, I believe, was done by Keegan Conley. We 
take a look back at that for me and just let me know if it was Keegan Conley. Just want to confirm that that was, in fact, Keegan Conley, but they got that goal. Number 33. But 1-1 is the score. 16th minute goal from Ohio Premier. And a foul called. This is part of the broadcast. is brought to you by FC Barcelona Camps. The FC Barcelona Soccer Camp is coming this June 10th through the 14th to Legacy Sports Center in Brighton, Michigan. This ball looking for Amir and shielded out for a goal kick. That's right, June 10th through the 14th at Legacy Sports Center in Brighton. You can head over to camps.fcbarcelona.us for more information and to register. And if you're going to register, put in promo code FCBMSN24 and save $30 off registration. So not only can you get the best of the coaching from FC Barcelona, as well as the experience, you can also save $30 along the way. So go ahead and check out FC Barcelona Camps today at camps.fcbarcelona.us. Promo code FCBMSN24 and save $30 today. Good ball through that seam. Reed Dennis. Clear this one up and away. Head coach of the Nationals is Zane Pollock. Matt Weiss is the head coach for Ohio Premier. I feel like a lot of our viewers at home are shy about getting in the comments. Don't be shy. We don't bite. It's all good. So in the course of six minutes, two goals scored, one for the Nationals, one for Ohio Premier. We're live here at Dick By Stadium here in Auburn Hills, Michigan, just 25 miles from downtown Detroit, home of the 2024 NFL Draft, taking place here in just under two weeks. And I believe about eh, 900 or so miles from Augusta, Georgia, where the Masters are taking place right now on this Sunday afternoon. Tiger Woods making history here this past week. I think about making 24 or 25 consecutive cuts he's made at the Masters. Do you know the exact number? Is it 24 or 25? I was unaware of that. That's some serious longevity. Huh? 24th. Goal, they're saying the goal is made number 22, which that would be Emmett O'Brien. That's the case. We have, we'll let you know. Put one all the way back now to the goalkeeper in McLenn. Demopolis. Now Jordan Klein. Christian O'Brien. Appreciate that comment. The game's finding its footing again. This is good. <laughs> That's Jackson on that far side. It's Joseph Churko. Unable to get that one across, and he's slow to get off, but goal kick coming up here for I'd like to see Ohio get their midfielders on the ball a bit more seems to be bypassing that part of the field fairly regularly in their build out play just going route one fairly often curious what they have to offer in the middle almost given away there we go a little bit of a sequence Able to get out of that pressure from their back line. Now take it backwards once again. It's a solid 20-plus pass sequence. They certainly have the quality. I think it's just taking them a minute to settle into the match. Tied up in the middle of the park. And down goes Shoya. 
No foul called. Aiden Gordon. Working this ball around the midfield. And they continue to move this ball. I and mean, this is really good soccer. That's just giving away. Of course, just as I say it, that's what happens. I mean, like it or not, if you're a coach of these kids, they are going on social, they are going on the internet, and they're seeing results, even if you try to Look shield at that them ball. from it. There's no way they didn't see yesterday's result and impact their decision of how to come out and play this game. It's so hard to coach a group out of that. Ooh, that's a hard tackle. A foul was not called. He says he got all ball. Wow. So a bone-crushing tackle on that side. Now here come the National. That's Amir. Find Shoya out here on the near side. Shoya cuts inside. Great defensive poke. But back to Amir. Still under pressure. Now down by the end line. Slots is across. Back post. Nobody there. Look that's Conley. That was the one that was slow to get up on that far side. This is yeah. part of the broadcast. is now brought to you by National Soccer Club. Achieving more together. Learn more about the joining the Nationals family. Visit nationalsoccer.com to learn more about the tryouts and all the Nationals have to offer your soccer player and family. Remember, they've got 16 locations across the state of Michigan. Go to nationalsoccer.com to learn more about tryouts and everything about the Nationals. They're the fastest growing club in the country. I'll tell you what, John, we're seeing a different Ohio side than the first 15 minutes or so of this match. They're really coming into their own. They're starting to grow some confidence. They're starting to stroke the ball around and get other guys involved in the attack. And I do think they're capable of competing with this Nats team. Hudson Rose saying great penalty save from Galvezone in the away game. It was. It was a great save. Unfortunately, you know, it, it, it was all for naught. Uh, I mean, from a highlight standpoint, it's great for the highlight reels, uh, but from the standpoint of the game, unfortunately, it was called back, and the retake was put home. We talked about that in the broadcast. If you want to check that out, go ahead and go back after this one to hear our thoughts on that callback. Back in the first game, we did do a kind of a look. A, uh, an honor to the Masters as far as kind of how we called the game for about five minutes. <laughs> a that painful back, honor. That was back in the first game of the day today. That was a 9 a.m. start. It's our third game of the day. And sixth overall for today, 12th for the weekend. It's a long-distance range shot right into the chest of Reed Dennis. So a good strike from distance from the center back for Ohio Premier. Yeah, Brady McGlone. Earlier in the match, he had that header back to the goalkeeper that almost led to a Roy finish, but made up for it there. It's a great strike from range, good technique, good form, confident strike, and a good save from the goalkeeper. It's really kind of nice that we're able to provide this coverage here for the ECNL sides here for both uh, Ohio Elite and Ohio Premier, along with Nationals this weekend. Not a lot of chance, I'm sure, these players get to, to be in, in an environment where, you know, you're going to have the, the professional-level kind of quality broadcasting that we're doing. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's probably exciting, I would imagine, on some level for not just the players, but also the parents and family to be able to watch these broadcasts and, and kind of have, you know, the, the fun uh, the experience of, of what it might be like. These, these players, all these players on this pitch, we, we have a list of committed players from, from Ohio Premier on this side. You know, I'll who make are all going to be playing you're, at some you're, level. You're absolutely right, and having coached professionally, and you get hundreds, hundreds of submissions each day of guys that want to play, and they'll do anything to play professionally. And there is a notable difference between guys that send footage in just from, you know, dad's handheld camera versus guys that send footage in where there's commentary, there's professional-level video, it's been edited. And it, it does make a difference. And I have to say, it's got to be very exciting for these players and their families to get to experience what the future will hold for the ones that go on to play at the next level. 
Uh, so you're right, John. It's a good shout. So a corner kick coming up here for Ohio Premier. Corey taken by Luke Hanlon, a Lipcomb University commit. They've stacked the goal line. Ball comes in. Look at this one back across the mouth of the goal. Still up in the air. A little poke. And that finds its way into the hands of Reed Dennis. Yeah, I don't know if that's deception by design or deception by execution. But to stack the goal line, often what you see is that the player there, who is a left-footed kick taker, is going to bend it into the goal, make the goalkeeper highly uncomfortable. And with all that traffic, it go in. Now... I don't know if that was an errant hit or whatnot, but he bypassed that part of the field and it was still reintroduced. It was an interesting set piece. It'd be fun to watch that one back. Settled down by Sevi Roy. Puts this one in towards the 18, making its way to Churko. Now this one will be a corner for the Nationals. Remember, they won yesterday 7-0 against Ohio Elite in their matchup, their final, the final match of the day for us as well yesterday. We're going to see a couple subs coming in here. It's a 27th minute. So while we're having those subs come in, let's get a, another read in, shall we, Sam Fisher? This part of the match is brought to you by Player Recruitment Videos here. That's right. The Michigan Soccer Network recently launched our Player Recruitment Highlight Video Program. Our programs are designed for every player's needs and budgets. Whether you already have a video and want more exposure or need to start from scratch, the Michigan Soccer Network is ready to help you get uh, to where you want to go. For more, visit michigansoccernetwork.com and select Highlight Videos on our website. Remember, your recruitment video and highlight video journey starts with a click. Ball be brought in. Low. Tied up. Defender and an attacker for the Nationals. There's a mirror that got tied up. Is this ball put up towards midfield? Jackson there for the Nationals. Now Conley, who's tied up as well. Continues to fight. The advantage was going to maybe given, but he fights through that pressure, and now a foul called. Appreciate all you watching here, whether you're watching from here in Michigan or Ohio or across the country. We had California, Macedonia here earlier today. Yesterday, Lexington, Kentucky, Chicago, Illinois, Boca Raton, Florida. Whenever I think of Boca Raton, I always think of Seinfeld and where Seinfeld's family lived in Florida, I believe that's where they were from, Boca Morty Raton. Morty Seinfeld, <laughs> making the trek down to retirement. You've got the episode, The Wizard, where Jerry has to pretend that he stole the thing because his dad thinks it's cool. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I've seen way too much Seinfeld in Boca Raton. That's, that's absolutely the aspiration is to end up there later in life. Coaching the game, of course, but still down there. Never going to forget the Cadillac one where... <laughs> Jerry gets the Cadillac, and Morty loses his seat on the uh, very, very prestigious on board. On the Del Boca <laughs> Vista board, and that is a two-parter, John Turner. That episode had so much juice that Larry David couldn't keep it to one 30-minute segment. So uh, that's a two-part episode. One of the best sitcoms ever made. I know that's up there with a lot of them. I mean, you, you can talk about a lot of the great ones. That's a great question to ask, sitcoms in the comment section. <laughs> you know, I know Friends is in there as one of the... I, I think they're considered sitcom. I know more... I think they're, they call them um, ensemble. Maybe you know, what I they, wouldn't mind seeing a soccer-based sitcom. You've got like Ted Wrexham Lasso? right now. You've got Ted Lasso. But that's not a sitcom as much as... You know, you need... I feel like you need four or five friends in a room trying to solve the world's footballing problems and getting into all sorts of shenanigans. Actually, I think, I think it would be kind of cool to have five roommates, all of which who play at different levels, one professional, one always down, yes. maybe even college, and you just have like four or five different roommates who um, you know, are kind of going through the growing pains and, and, and the fun and, and the hard experience of playing at the different levels, getting, getting to your ultimate goal of maybe being professional. That would That'd be, be kind of a cool. excellent series and having coached professionally and having coached six-year-olds and having coached everything, there are so many commonalities that it would just be absolutely hilarious. And it, there's absolutely no reason that there couldn't be a youth player on a fourth team within this club with more of an ego than a pro. It happens all the time, and it would be really funny to see a show about that. It's Dubboca Vista, by the way. 
I said Del Boca Vista. No, the, the I think someone said it's not it's not Boca Raton. I thought that they lived in Boca Raton and Del, Del Boca Del, Vista is the, the uh, like association the, yeah, the, name the complex, of the yeah. complex where Morty is. Uh, I don't know if he's the president, but he's certainly uh, he, he was treasurer, president. He I want to He was removed. He, he was, was removed. removed. No question. Yeah. There's a couple more subs coming on here for Ohio Premier. I don't know. I might get that confused with King of Queens because there's parents lived in Florida too. He was born in Canada, if you don't remember. Kevin James <laughs> uh, currently has a pretty good interview with Joe Rogan on Spotify. Oh, it's and, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, saying, okay, all right. Well, there you go. Okay. Hey, I, I I stand corrected, as you should. All right. Well, hey. Modern fact checking is incredible. I think it's great. You know, when when you and I were coming up, everybody was a former professional player from Europe, and you couldn't verify it. But now you can't even pull a quick one over which part of Florida Seinfeld episode's in. Ball makes his way back to McClen. But I still want to ask a question, greatest sitcoms. I mean, we can talk about all of them, but what's your greatest sitcom? I, there's so many of them. I mean, I know Big Bang Theory was is a, the more recent run. I mean, I think, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um... What else is this? We have mentioned Friends. Uh, I think Curb Your Enthusiasm should be in that conversation. Modern be. Family, uh, The Office, uh, all of those are, are great, great sitcoms of our time. But there are so many uh, that I think have been made over the years. Uh, yeah, and you just think about well, great you shows. Got, you got Cheers, Rules of Engagement. I don't know. I, I, Seinfeld's my favorite one. And it'll be very difficult for me to change that. And even with technology becoming obsolete and the scenarios that they get in being easily solvable if you just had a cell phone, it's still just such a well-ridden show. Is everything okay? I don't know. What happened? To make sure everything okay, we are, our camera operation up there went thud. What fell? What fell? Hang on a second. Hang on. Are you okay? What happened? Well, I think the soccer ball just hit the speaker. False alarm, folks. It's just the soccer ball that hit, but it, it really sounded scary and bad, so apologies for the broadcast. Yeah, my apologies. I uh, we heard this big thud. No one said anything, and then <laughs> it's a hard tackle on that far side of the pitch. Brain starts to do the worst case scenario, and I thought somebody fell off the top. To be fair, so I'm I'm glad it was just a soccer ball. Our apologies for the scare there for you watching it at home. But this part of the broadcast is brought to you by Julia Zahn Real Estate. The real estate market can be messy, confusing, when to buy, when to sell, home inspections, appraisals. Who knows? It's just, it could be a mess. So you're looking to buy or sell, call Julia Zahn today at 248-422-2562. That's 248-422-2562. Ball still inside the 18, looking for Amir. Amir puts a shot off. That's deflected out for a corner. Yeah, so many things can go through your head, you know, when you hear, I mean, again, obviously at home you probably didn't hear that, but we certainly did. And, uh, you know, when you have your camera operators up there operating cameras, it's understandable why we were a little panicked there for a moment, but this one coming in a corner kick. Still inside the 18, now finally cleared away, but not out of danger. Demopolis. Good defensive work. He had a lot to do there to make sure that wow, that attack didn't well keep going. Done. That's well defended. How often do you see a professional following a yellow card there, and he's able to actually win the ball clean? That's well done. So now show you on the ball on this near side. Puts it in. That's Cherko. Cherko gets the ball back and give it go, and that one's one time shot at McLean. He makes the save. 
expected a more aggressive campaign at the official by Ohio there. Really looked like a bit of a hold to get around that player and not much of a reaction, so maybe we saw it wrong. Maybe we did. Is 36th minute, 1-1 game. Both goals coming in the first 20 minutes of this game. The first goal coming back in the 10th from Sebi Roy. And the, in the 16th, the equalizer. Believe that was from number 22, Emmett O'Brien. So hard, hard collision here between Shoya and Ohio Premier. Swings around here on this near side. There's Mason Horwath. Now in center back. This is disciplined team defending from Ohio. It looks like they've set up line of confrontation right about five yards on the wrong side of midfield. And Nats has control of it. They're letting him stroke it around at the back. and. This will definitely conserve energy for them to have in the late going of the match. It's intelligently put together, team defending tactics. Oh, look at that ball right through the scene. That's looking to Conley. Conley into the 18. Out comes Reed Dennis, makes the save. And then I believe he actually hits off Conley on its way. Strong exit oh, they're by gonna Dennis. Say a corner kick. Strong exit. Timed it well. No, actually, it was not. It was number. Hard time seeing that jersey number. So Will Baker will take the corner kick. He's going to Ohio Northern University. That's also a whack school. Ball comes in right towards that near post, but headed away. That was knocked out. Final read here of the first half. The Michigan Goalkeeper Academy is presenting these next five minutes. Take your goalkeeping to the next level. Register the Michigan Goalkeeper Academy camps this summer, personal training, and more. Visit michigangoalkeeperacademy.com, the oldest and best goalkeeper academy in the state of Michigan. I believe it's like over 40 years strong. Three late subs. For Nats, Roy catching a break. See if he starts the second half or if they do another delayed entry like they did in the last match. So players getting tied up. Both Nationals and Ohio Premier. That was Zach Rollins, number six. Coming up here at halftime, we'll step aside, take some commercial by another foul. That one from Sager Patel. Play on that far side. Oh, 
I mean, actually, it's number 13. I don't have a 13 on my roster. Um, maybe it's in here somewhere. I don't have a 13, so if anyone can help us with the number 13 is on this Ohio Premier side, we'd appreciate that. Amir, Demopoulos. We'll play this one back to Horwath. Let's touch on this from Yatuma Jr. That's Michael. Good spin out of trouble. Going to solve the problem. That's Patel. It's now Gordon. As Amir. Careful. Brings it back down and settles it down for the Nationals. And they're in the all-black kits going right to left on your screen. Ohio Premier in the gray and black trim kits going left to right. Yatuma Jr. Good cut back. Good give and go. Back to Yatuma. This one deflects. Still inside the 18. Finally cleared away. Simon Sawyer, get the ball back. Robert Wisser. Forty-third minute, just two minutes to go here in this first half. So getting towards the business end of this first half as a foul called and. Stop that attack for the Nationals. We brought back in eventually. Tell you what, this oldest age group can be very difficult from a numerical standpoint, just of men that are available. And sometimes when college gets out, you get some players that come back and, and help the process. But you have to wonder if you might be seeing a few men that played earlier in the day and are able to play in a second match. Uh, just to put it all together, it's, it's a difficult age group to, to put together with a full side. Good ball up here now. Is this one looked to slot it across? That stop, but right back. At the feet is Will Baker. And now a throw in. A couple more subs coming in. This time for the Nationals. So here comes the throw in. Good long throw right in the middle of the box. Zach Rollins. Tell you what, Turner, away. you got the right pitch, a throw of that length. I mean, that could be a tactical tool that team is largely based around. You'd be fighting for throw ins above corner kicks when you got someone that can do that. Couldn't agree more. I don't anticipate a ton of stoppage time in this one. This ball comes in and it goes out. King lost a little bit of his muster here from what we had earlier on. It's kind of flattened out a little bit. Not be indicative of kind of the calm before the storm as we get into the second half here. Yeah, first five ten of that second half are going to be a drastically different speed of play than we're seeing right now. I think a number of players are are taking a break and fair play to them. I mean, at this level in this league, you can sub out and then re-enter in the second half, and I've seen a number of impactful players. Take a five, ten minute break here to be ready to go again. So number 13, 
is uh, actually Cheek Tunkara. So we appreciate you letting us know that. That's from Nathan Wilbanks. And that was not on our roster, so. My guess is that maybe um, Cheek forgot his jersey at home. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you have three teams, or sorry, six teams all traveling from uh, from home, you, may, you might forget a jersey. You can grab somebody else's, right? That's how that usually works. <laughs> yeah, we've got him down as 47. So, uh, yeah, I think you're right, Turner. It's very possible. Well, either way here, a goal in the 10th minute from Sebi Roy. And then an equalizing goal in the 16th from number 22, Emmett O'Brien, leaves this game tied here going to the halftime break. We're going to step aside. 45 minutes to go. Will Ohio Premier stun the old 506 of the Nationals? Will Nationals come out of this with a victory? We'll find out after this. Now Worrell has a good cutback from him. He'll fire one, and that's going to go in! Granite City Food and Brewery has two Michigan locations in Troy and Northville. Serves made-from-scratch food, brews in-house beer, and even has brunch every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. To learn more about their daily specials or to book a private party, visit GCFB.com. Make sure you head over to Granite City in Northville at the corner of Seven Mile and Haggerty or the Troy location at 16 Mile and I-75. Are you looking to play at the next level? MSN is now offering player recruitment videos. We are excited to partner with you and your family in getting you to the next level. To learn more about our packages and what we offer, head over to the michigansoccernetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a click. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Our mission is to help players take their game to the next level and reach their potential. Not only do we help develop fundamental technical skills such as ball control in tight spaces with different surfaces, dribbling at speed and changing direction, using a variety of 1v1 skills to create space, receiving on a half turn, hook turn and out of the air, finishing off the dribbling, one touch, volleys and headers. We help players get comfortable performing these skills at game speed with pressure and with both their dominant and non-dominant foot. In addition, we help players with their speed of play, awareness of space, defenders and teammates, and also dominate with their off the ball movement. We offer a variety of services such as one-on-ones, small groups, large groups, as well as team sessions. We have an experienced coaching staff that is professional, friendly, patient, while still holding players to high standards and holding them accountable. No matter what level you're at as a player, I'm confident we can help you get better. Over the past three years, we've built one of the best soccer-specific training facilities in the country and developed one of the most detail-oriented programs to help out players. Visit our website. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a sister. I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm a referee. I'm a referee. I'm a referee. I'm a referee. Are you looking to play at the next level? MSN is now offering player recruitment videos. We are excited to partner with you and your family in getting you to the next level. 
To learn more about our packages and what we offer, head over to the michigansoccernetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a click. Now Worrell has a good cutback from him. He'll fire one, and that's going to go in! take your game to the next level. Did you know that MSN is now offering player recruitment videos? Our packages include a player profile where you show your preferred positions, the club, the league or school that you play in, your current coach contact information, and more. The highlight videos could be self-submitted 15 to 30 clips that will be put into a three to seven minute long video. Video review of your huddle, VO, or other platforms that you might have video on, as well as for an additional charge, MSN can come out and film games for you to create those clips. Our coach evaluation process, which is also an additional charge, will where we have college coaches from various levels across the United States that will review your game film and provide feedback on how to improve that film, as well as also evaluating your play and what you can improve on. To learn more about our packages and what we offer, head over to the michigansoccernetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a click. And welcome back here into Avondale High School, Dick Bay Stadium. Today's Ohio Valley East Indiana Boys Soccer matchup. Ohio Premier traveling in from Dublin, Ohio, taking on the National Soccer Club from Shelby Township, Michigan. We appreciate you stopping by. John the Turner alongside Alex Lubianski. And uh, we're excited uh, to bring this live action to you here today. We're going to bring it back a little master style here. I, I just got to find the music that I er used earlier here. Uh, oh, just boy. Make sure. This you know, segment was so effective earlier, and as I, a coach myself, with 150-yard distance between myself and the opposing sidelines, I am really enjoying watching the various styles, the integrations, the song, the dance, the hand gestures, the universal language of the game. And you got to compliment Ohio on their current ability to not use any visual aids other than a man, his eyeballs, and his hands. He is conveying magic. He is conveying the X's, the O's, the yeses, the no's. And then you take a look at the Nats bench. And yeah, there's multiple men and they're taking stages at various times. And you have to appreciate the coordination of that. But what they also have, and what everyone should have, are 22 cones. 11 yellow, 11 orange. And in the theoretical world of youth soccer, there's nothing quite like lining up a set of cones to perfectly articulate your point. This is how the opponent lines up. This is what we will do to exploit it. This is how we will counterbalance their efficacy in these parts of the field. 
all while the men in front of you are pretending to listen. And let me tell you, what's going to happen is the whistle will blow and the theory will disappear. And whichever team runs harder and has a desire to win this has about a 97% chance of doing so. But we still do it because that is coaching. And this is the least coach-centric sport on the planet. And for that, I am grateful because it is the men on the pitch that decide the results. And here we go. I couldn't have said it better, my friends. Jim Nance says it best. Hello, friends. Perfectly stated. It is 74 degrees here in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Pressure, 29.63 inches. Inches are exactly inches are the exactly. measure that I would use. Wind, 15 miles an hour pressure. out of the west. <laughs> it feels a bit more like 27 inches of pressure, but you got to trust whatever barometer it takes to give you that indicator. I mean, that is, wow. The referees are walking back onto the pitch, as well as the Nationals. They are feeling exactly 29.63 inches of pressure. But I will research this ad nauseum tonight because I, I have no idea what that means, but I do enjoy it. It is 1-1 here at the half, as we're about to get underway here with this second half of the round. <laughs> Just made the turn. Green Jacket on the line here this evening as these national boys and Ohio Premier boys looking. As all the majors come down to, it is tournament Sunday and the best golfers take out their best equipment only for this day. You know, you think of Tiger, I, I believe he used to wear red on Sundays only and whether or not that's true, I just said it. So he did make a great video game also. And if you stroke the ball, even within 50 yards of the green, it would go into slow motion, it would go into a cinematic moment, and until true professional gaming came along, it would always go in as a hole-in-one, but now you actually have to compete against one another because they've legalized sports betting, which means they've legalized video game betting as well. So now you have to increase the skill level, and I no longer play that game. As we are back underway here, from the green and <laughs> wonderful Dig by Stadium here at Avondale High School. As a shot is blocked. Unlike in golf, you cannot block a shot. You can just miss a shot. <laughs> you can whiff a shot. <laughs> that you could can get be caught in the rough, but here the key you differential can be in the mess. between soccer and golf is there are <laughs> opponents who are allowed to get in the way of your ball striking. That is true. I wish that they would add that to golf, where you have the ability to get a couple psych moves, you know, per nine. Yeah, as compelling as the Live Tour was, I think what we just described would be even better. I, uh, I couldn't agree more, and that's why I want to create the full contact golf tour. <laughs> Coming this, <laughs> this ball comes in, a wide open was the back post. Now a shot from outside the 18. That was Jordan Klein taking a crack at it. Yeah, Newton's Law of Football, my friends. A ball in the air tends to stay in the air until it doesn't, and uh, that was one of those sequences. I believe we still have Liam McClan in goal. Hard tackle. That's called, so... Last half here of the weekend for us. Been an honor to call Nationals and Ohio Premier, and along with Ohio Elite this weekend. Hopefully you all appreciated the commentary and the coverage. Believe you me, we are trying to go nationwide, so our plan is to continue to expand what we are doing here and bringing this coverage to each and every state. Demopolis on that far side will get knocked out, flicked off of You still see mirror. this resistance of Nats to go back to their goalkeeper. I mean, it's just, it's such a simple solution when executed correctly. And uh, 
from the younger age groups, you're, you're not doing it. It's very difficult to suddenly flip a switch, and, and they do seem to have a tendency to just turn into pressure or play it out of play when, uh, you know, you, you, you trust the goalkeeper's feet, you go negative, and you solve a lot of problems. Hall Premier on the ball now. Played inside. Adams, good tackle. Klein loses it. And the ball through that seam. Looking for Keegan Conley. Conley looking to slot this one across. It deflects out for a corner. It's an early opportunity here in this second half for Ohio Premier. First time stopping by, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Like us and share this with your friends and family. Watch the video, watch the highlight videos. And that's big front man Roy is back on the pitch and got to love to see he's dropping back to play defensively on a corner kick inside of his own 18. Love in, that characteristic of a striker to be able to defend as well. In Gordon puts this one in right into traffic. A shot from outside goes wide. Shot coming in from Lewis Roseberry. A John Carroll University commit. A lot of college commits on the field today. That is coming up here tonight on the Michigan Soccer Network, the Michigan High School Soccer Coaches Association High School Ranking Show. Kicking off here at 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll talk about the top 15 Girls high school soccer teams from around the state from each division, one, two, three, and four. So join Dan Stickrad and I tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube. So we'll bring you that coverage live. One hour high school show. We're going to announce our broadcast contest winner this week. All they had to do was get their team together, say we watch soccer on the Michigan Soccer Network, and tag us in social media posts. And ultimately, we would select a winner. We have a winner we've selected, and we'll announce that here tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. This is part of the match is brought to you by MSN News. That's right, MSN News. The only place to get your breaking soccer news in Michigan from youth to professional, the Michigan Soccer Network is dedicated to bringing you the best that soccer has to offer in the great state of Michigan. Visit michigansoccernetwork.com. Click on MSN News. Grab your coffee, maybe a snack. We've got over 300 articles on there right now you can read. Ball now, Andrew Adams. Good switch to that far side. Ball played in, but does not make it to its intended target. But Ohio Premier has the ball once again. They have had a good chunk of spells of possession here throughout this game. Ooh, a good ball inside. That ball, Emmett O'Brien. O'Brien puts it out wide. Looking to put this one back across into the six, and that one does not make it to its target. And now cleared up and out of danger, at least for the time being. I'll tell you what, if you look at the nuances of that entry pass, he actually gave every visual cue that he was going wide. The game called for him to go wide, and then he deceptively slotted into the central channel into the feet of the center forward. That was a beautiful play by Ohio. Sebi Roy receives it out in the width. He'll just dribble through everybody right now. He'll take a left-footed banger, but it's right at McLenn. Yesterday we saw him take a left-footed banger, upper 90. Boy, it's special to have a player like that who can just change the face of a game individually, gets on the ball. He's not afraid to get moving, going forward towards goal. and It's a real game-changer there. Ball popped up on that far side. So battle between the Nationals and Ohio Premier. That one will go out. Throw in coming up. Both goals coming in the first half during a six-minute burst. Foul there as yeah, he got it. player goes down. Advantage of note was not given, but he was taken outside the box. So a free kick just outside the 18. Player did end up well inside the 18. I believe it was Sebi Roy that was the one that was tackled. Tell you what, in real time, it really looked like he was fouled in the box, but how often do you see that where the official just gives the set piece just outside? And 
Again, well, it's, it's all it's where the contact originates. So if the contact ends in the box, it's not necessarily a penalty shot. If it starts out, so if you're tripping a player up and they are starting to be tripped inside outside the 18, it will be brought back to where that uh, that contact originated. So that is it, absolutely correct. Uh, from all indications, it looked like the first contact was inside the box, at least, again, in real time from here. Official has a much better read on the game, a much better position to make that decision. But you do, you do very often see, even when the contact does start inside the box, an official will, will still make the decision to give it outside. I mean, it's just it's part of the way the game goes. Something that they talk about at the young, younger levels of refereeing is, is the, the word they use is courageous, right? Now, courageous can, can be a lot of forms, right? It can be courageous in the moment of adversity where, you know, your back is up against the wall. Look at this transitional moment now. A little, little touch. The flag will go up on that last touch as it is put in, into the back of the net. Oh, but what a shame because what a sequence. What a sequence that was. They got so many players involved. The ball moved so quickly. It was all crisp, sharp, nuanced, one-touch passing. Oof. Just offside. Just offside is good transitional moment there. But as I go back to what I was talking about, being courageous, you know, it's it's a it's in that first 13 seconds of a game where a ball is you know handball off the goal line, you know, and you got to give a red card, right? Or it's, <laughs> you know, it, it's the last three minutes of, of stoppage time, and and a foul occurs inside the box. Are you gonna are you gonna point to the penalty spot? Are you gonna? pull it outside as you mentioned here earlier it's being courageous understanding that there's moments of courage in these games and the referees in those moments have to be ready to be you know take the call and uh and be ready to to do even the the one thing that they may not even want to do which is not make a call in certain situations as well so being courageous is definitely a conversation that they're having at the younger levels as referees prepared to go on to the next level would that be you know, play, yeah, refereeing well, a game like this? Or? It's an honor to be in the booth with you, Turner, and I know that you have a, a lengthy history and career where you were an official, and, you know, people people are so quick to criticize that position. I don't, I don't want to appear that way by any means. I think it's one of the most difficult professions out there, and on the totality, I think they've done a phenomenal job in all three matches today. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it's just the way that I saw it in the moment. And um, that's good insight. And again, officials are being trained. They are having these conversations. They're having cups of coffee. I'd like to see more interplay between officials, players, parents, coaches, where you can share a round table and really find a way to oh, have that. Well, just give it to Sebi Roy. That's the last person you want to turn the ball over to. But what a great defensive play there for the Ohio Premier Defender. I'm not quite sure which player that was. We'll take a look here in a moment. But my goodness, what a defensive moment. You have Sevy Roy coming at you at full pace. Big win. Big win. That was number four. That's Josh Ali. I mean, he had that win, the header off the goal line here earlier in this match. And talk about another big save right there. I mean, that's, that's a tall order. Yeah, that's well done by Ali. And you really have to get that right. I mean, you, you missed that by an inch. That potentially could be a game-changing moment. You don't know if there's if there's a card becomes part of that, if if a penalty becomes part of that. Well, I don't and think in that scenario, just based on what was happening, there was a there's there's a lot of factors in regard to denial of the goal scoring opportunity. Anything outside the 18, if you meet the the, the criteria, you're going to get a red card. Yeah. Uh, but if again, I, I think that there was not enough criteria there that if he did not make that tackle or made you know missed the ball. That he would have gotten maybe, I think the worst case would have been a yellow card, uh, just because there is a player in proximity to that. Um, so that would have, I think, nullified that that moment. Uh, but I do understand what you're saying because you know if, if if another defender is too far away, you know you've you've got you, you've got all the things that could possibly be a, a red card, and that is in fact a game changing opportunity here in this. Well, game. that's the other bit of it, and fair fair credit to his teammates as well. You know, if you are that last defender and you're able to go down and go for a challenge of that nature your closest teammate should be sprinting as fast as they can so that when the referee does make that decision, you've already sprinted beyond them and it makes it appear as if in the moment you were not. So there's a lot that goes into these things. There's a lot that can be learned from conversation between coaches, refs, players. Um, and you can clearly, clearly see an improvement in overall quality of play between the modern youth game and what we saw, you know, even 15, 20 years ago. Ball play up that far side is 
Solomon Gambone runs onto it. So this part of the match is brought to you by Premier Sports Center. The Premier Sports Center is a new 60,000 square foot indoor sports facility, the only one of its kind in Macomb County, Michigan. We offer large regulation size game fields that are the same size as outdoor fields. No need to comp compromise space for your games or training as this ball kind of punches its way through, but I'll come to read Dennis. To learn more about Premier Sports Center, head over to playpremier.com. Premier Sports Center is actually the home of our MSN studios in Shelby Township, Michigan. Spend a lot of my time, as well as Dan Stickrate, our director of news at our studio, not only preparing our news articles and advertising opportunities, but also our live shows that we do a couple times a week from those studios. Settled down. So you Wilbanks. Wilbanks cuts through two defenders. He's got a player wide open on that far side. They connect. Looking for this one back across. Now it's cleared away by Gambone. But not out of danger. So he makes his way back. Lewis Roseberry. Plays his ball on this near side. It stays on the pitch. No, it does not. Keegan Conley just wasn't able to keep it on the pitch. Yeah, Conley just didn't get wide enough early enough in that moment and put himself in a tough spot where the ball was still in the field of play, but he had to turn his body towards the sideline. You know, if he pulls away early and faces with his belly button to the far post, gets that ball on his front foot, he might even cut it across the back line and go to goal there. Uh, I just think it was a little bit late to recognize where the moment was going to go. Sun kind of tucks behind the clouds here for a bit. Welcome here. Take our sunglasses off. Maybe. <laughs> so they'll be thrown in by Jackson. Good long throw up towards Sebi Roy, who is held up by Josh Ali. Good defensive work. Wisser, is this one played now over that back line, looking for Sebi Roy. A little outside of the right foot. I'll tell you though, one way to stop a good a good player, but especially a player of technical so technical soundness as a Sebi Roy, who's got speed and and the intelligence uh, of of a great player, is to be on their heels, right? They they you know, can talk about that all day long. Uh, as someone who coached soccer, the one thing I would always tell players is it, it, get on their heels. You know, I'm not talking about being chippy or being you know being you know unsportsmanlike or anything like that. But you know what, let your, that player know that that you're there. You know, and, uh, uh, and being physical because a lot of times players, especially of that caliber, just aren't comfortable being physical, especially when they want the ball at their feet. So, you know, you're seeing that from, from this uh, defender and Josh Ali who uh, committed to Emory University. And he's doing a fantastic job of, of providing that pressure on Sebi Roy. The Harvard of the South. So a corner kick coming up here for the Nationals. But you're right, it's the great quote. Everybody has a plan to get punched in the mouth. And, and you do that to a player of that nature, and next thing you know, you have a much better chance against them. If you give them time on the ball, you give them comfort, you let them feel like they really are able to be on the field and have the, the ball at their feet and have a nice little day at the park, they do perform better. But you start being all over them, and next thing you know, you get to see a player like that have to deal with pressure. And it's a very different game when guys are all over you, and you have to figure out how to deal with it. Shoya will put this one back in. Low ball in the mix, and somehow that gets all the way through all that traffic. I like that set piece. I think that was by design. That's a nice dummy. You get the player you want in the spot that you want, and my word, that could have been a goal for sure. Gambon got a piece of it. It went wide. This part of the match is brought to you by Legends Motors. Hundreds of cars to choose from. Legends Motors has three locations to serve you in Ferndale, Waterford, and Detroit. Visit LegendsMotors.com. Remember, your journey for a brand new car starts by going to LegendMotors.com. Sebi Roy, just outside the 18. This one falls to Jordan Klein, and it goes up and over. Nationals continue to knock on the doorstep here. They scored their goal back in the 10th. That was Sevi Roy who scored. And then a goal in the 16th minute. 
by number 22, Emmett O'Brien, who is committed to Denison University. This is one of the great similarities between soccer and basketball is these whole runs of play where one team really seems to have the advantage and the, and the joy and the run of play. And, you know, the different bit is in basketball, you can put up 20, 30 points in one of those moments. In soccer, you might just get nothing at all and not take any advantage of it. And next thing you know, you know, just because you've had the chances for 15, 20 minutes, by no means is it a sure result at the end of the game. Ball falls to number 11, Amir. Jackson inside to Wisser. Slide it back across into the box. Good idea there from Chirko. This is a Nationals spell. They have had it. They have been in dangerous areas. They just haven't capitalized yet. The back heel from Shoya. That one to be knocked out. Another corner kick to deal with. Tell you what, if Ohio can withstand this for the next five, ten minutes, they snap back, they bite, they win this game. Fascinating match they got going today. Set pieces are one of the most crucial things you can spend time on if you're a coach. They say... And I know this, this is what they say. They say 40% of all goals are scored from set pieces. They say 99% of statistics are made up on the spot. That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia. This one's played in right towards McClen. Uh, gets a punch there on it. This, this, this there one it is. There it is. Is cleared this up. Out blow? comes Reed Dennis. And he's going to have no choice but to clear that out. What oh, a great heads up play from the electric, goalkeeper. Electric. Electric. That right there, if he does not time that perfectly. That was a great decision. That's all I'm going to say. I can't even say anything. call the card of the red nature, my friend. That would have been. Did, and he went for it, and you got to admire it. It's a big win by Dennis. Reed Dennis with a huge clearance there and clearing it out. It was Emmett O'Brien who was making that run. This ball goes all the way back down to McClen. Ali. One back by the Nationals. Chirico finds Jackson. Jackson slots inside for Sebi Roy. He dummies it and lets that one go back for Shoya, but he was involved. See, the, pro the problem there inside the 18, you're not going gonna to have a hard press to not have, you know, have interference, right? That, that's that's the, the way that the, the, the law has been rewritten, right? It, it used to be, you know... Uh, Participation mattered. Uh, it also, you know, hey, where was the defender? You know, where are you in proximity to the goal? Are you obstructing the goalkeeper? They've rewritten that law, and the law now is written in a way that really allows the referee in those moments, along with the assistant referee, to try to get that one right. And I do agree that in that moment, that dummy would have been interference in form of the goalie as well as the defender, and that's a good call. It's one of the more interesting bits of the game. Offsides is definitely one of those. Remember, it is not in itself an offense to be in an offside position. That's an important thing. This isn't like hockey. That is right? correct. You know, so being in an offside position is not in itself an offense. It's what happens in relation to the ball that matters. You know, and hey, a dummy 50 yards from goal doesn't matter. You know, you know what I mean? the other bit, though, is there's no VAR here. So it's not one of those where you let the play continue and the ball goes in and then you go and you sort it out academically on the tail end of it. I mean, you really do have to make the decisions in the moment. And fair play to the officiating crew because they made that call and that was it. You know, if they let that play out and there is no VAR and then they go back and they say, you know what, that was actually offside, I think it would be, you know, fuel for a fire um, and, and they didn't do that. They made the call, and fair play to them. I think they've done very well there. So Chirko puts it out wide for Amir. 
looking inside, and that one's broken up. But, you know, Alex, to your point, uh, something I would say is that I'm okay, I'm okay if they delay that there as well, and then they go get it right. I'm okay with it, because even though they're not VAR, they still have the ability to go talk to each other. And if, in fact, the referee, uh, the assistant referee on this side, was like, hey, offsides was clear, it's now up for the center referee whether to say, hey, whether or not that Sebi Roy was involved in interfering with that play. And if they, they may have that conversation, maybe it's a good goal. You're absolutely right. My, my standpoint is from what it does to the players, what it does to the crowd, what it does to the coaches. If they let that play out, it is, it is something where if they do change the outcome after the fact, even if they've thought it through, even if they've articulated it, even if they've done everything perfectly, I think it is more likely to lead to an emotional rise from the entire game's environment than if they make the call in the moment like they did. I guess my question for you is: Is would rather they get it right, or would you rather they, you know, they, they, you know, take a, a swing, a swing in the dark, so to speak? Because uh, the reason I'm saying that is, my, what, what my if they... answer depends on what my role is within the game. Fair now, enough. Right now, my answer is they rather get the answer quickly and avoid these kids getting into some kind of a physical altercation. Okay. Where you know, if I'm the coach, and certainly the coach that would benefit from it, of course, I would rather they take their sweet time and give me the answer that I want and get it right. But as far as trying to keep an environment safe and trying to keep a game enjoyable, I'm glad that he made that call at the moment that he made that call. Fair enough. That's why I asked the question. So, so here we are. We're in the 70th minute. It's 1-1. Both goals coming in the, fourth, uh, the, the first half. I don't know where the fourth came from. In the first half. And... Uh, and uh, we're excited that you're along here for the ride. You're watching the Michigan Soccer Network's live coverage of the Ohio Valley ECNL Boys Soccer. Ohio Premier traveling in from Dublin, Ohio, taking on the Michigan-based National Soccer Club. And I, I didn't go to class too much, John, but when I did, I, I'm pretty sure every lawyer has taught the answer to every question is it depends. That's right. Look at that little <laughs> give and go, but... Reed Dennis is right there <laughs> before it makes its way to Sagara Patel. Hard to go wrong with it depends. That is true. You hear that a lot when you're watching TikTok. All these attorneys <laughs> talking about, well, could you, could you sue if you get by a golf ball? Depends. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. It's Jordan Klein out to show you. He has Amir making that run. Now Shoya will take a shot through traffic and diving to his right is Liam McClen. That's a tough save because that ball deflected. That ball caught some spin that it wouldn't have had otherwise because of the block, and he was still able to hold it clean. That's well done. So we're now, as we mentioned, the 70th minute. This part of the broadcast is brought to you by Monday Sportsplex. Monday Sportsplex is your first class indoor sports facility featuring indoor soccer leagues, tournaments, and soccer training. We also host other indoor sports activities such as baseball, practice football, fitness groups, and more. Rain your space at Monday today. Visit MondaySportsplex.com. Monday Sportsplex located in Genesee County, Michigan. Ball played towards Wisser. Wisser. Ball just passed a mirror, and this one cleared up over midfield. Little shove there on the back. Shoya continues to battle. Ball now played to Jordan Klein. Now Sebi Roy goes out wide. Inside the box. That one poked away. Out for a corner. First off, we want to say how much we appreciate you tuning into this game here today. Having a blast here bringing all this coverage to you. Want to learn more about what we do here at the Michigan Soccer Network? Head over to michigansoccernetwork.com. Another corner kick here for the Nationals. Shoy will put this one back in. It's a high ball up in the air, just passed. And now Jordan Klein, still in the box. Just outside the 18, Klein fighting. He's got Shoy out wide. Shoya tries to cut through two defenders. He is taken down, but no foul, says the referee. I think he got that one right. Well, you're always taking that risk as, a, as an attacker, right? So it's, a, it's, it's a high risk, it's high reward. 
All right, well, you're trying to dribble to, through a number of defenders. You're going to either get the raw end of the stick, maybe get a foul, but you're also, you're also as you're trying to go through that, that, that pressure and through that defense, you're, you're trying to attract contact. And Absolutely. because of that, the referee is going to take that into consideration. And it's going to have to be, you know, it's going to have to be real contact. That's, that's a foul in order for you to win that. It's another hard tackle on that far side. Amir goes down. So just about 17 minutes to go here in this one. In Dick By Stadium here in Auburn Hills, Michigan. A couple substitutions coming on now here for Ohio Premier. Simon Sawyer, who's been playing center back, gets up there in the attack. This ball comes in. Sebby Roy gets ahead on it. McLean. A lot of straight vertical runs. I, I'd like to see them introduce a little bit of nuance and maybe even some picks to try to open guys up even more with their off-ball movement on these set pieces. But, uh, again, it could be a team that's dangerous if, if they spend some time developing the ability to score off of set pieces. Good size, good athleticism. Almost flicked over Josh Ali. What do you think, Turner? Should they introduce the uh, own assist? You know, they have the own goal. But if you play a ball that clearly puts someone in wearing the wrong color, that could be an interesting concept. Well, that is that is look a good, interesting way. I, I, I think it's just hard to track. <laughs> Very hard to track. Gambone. Out wide. Kicked up. Mephilotis. See, but then you're introducing golf scoring into soccer. The fewer own assists you have, the more effective of a player you are. Lower is better. In honor of the Masters. Under par. <laughs> I can't remember what year, but it was the year that Tiger Woods was like negative 22, under, you know, 22 under par for the Masters. Some crazy number. I think it was 1990. That's a hard tackle as Jordan Klein is taken down. So a dangerous free kick opportunity. Klein is slow to get up, holding his arm. So he's still holding his arm. Probably saw through the man to get to the ball is my guess on that one. Because I do think the ball was involved eventually on that tackle. And that was the frustration that that player showed. This is a good attacking setup. You know, you got a player poached out at the top of the box for anything that bounces out. You've got options. Let's see what we do here. Klein puts it back post. Just too much air on it and sails out. Our last read here of the game is Evolution Soccer. Build and perfect your skills and elevate your game to a new level. Book your session today at evolutionperformancetraining.com or call 248-795-5291. That's 248-795-5291 or head over to evolutionperformancetraining.com and book your session today. Tunkar re-entering the game. Good ball through the seam there. That's Shaq Rollins. Rollins taken down. All for a throw in. One back by the Nationals, and then just like that, you see Caden Kist goes down. He's slow to get up. 
Time running out here. Both these teams tied up here. It's a deadlock, one apiece. Both goals coming in the first half. A 10th minute goal from Sebi Roy, a 16th minute goal from Emmett O'Brien. All the difference in this. Good ball up this near sideline. That's Chirko. Chirko all alone. Got a lot of green space in front. Good track back by Kist. Chirko takes a shot towards the near post. It's deflected out for a corner. Yeah, he did well to angle it to try to cut out that recovery run. He just sort of decelerated a bit much, and they were able to catch him, and it's well defended. Sorry, some bubbles popping over here. <laughs> Shoya will put this one back in. Good ball, just Oof. inside, and Sebi Roy just could not get ahead on that. Oof. Just, I mean, hit off his head. He just did not find, find the center of the ball to put that one on frame. Does not feel like a match that's going to end 1-1. It does not feel that way. I want to thank our production crew here today, the best in the business. Up top on camera, Nathan Turner. On camera one, on camera two, Ryan Gagnon. Our other commentators, Giovanni Mosseri and Alex Johnson on field number two. Brianna Turner and Zoe Turner on graphics and audio. Is a shot from Sebi Roy and a save from McClen. Goes out for a corner kick. Dan Stickrad, our director of news, is busy right now writing news articles. We'll have those available here on our website tomorrow. Recaps from this weekend. There's a lot, 12 games in total, and he's going to write a recap for every single one of them. This ball comes in, bounces around, still loose, and cleared away, but a foul was called. Yeah, Ohio keeping Romanelli high there. They won the first ball. Maybe they snap on the counter and... Snipe this result. Kid and Kiss, by the way, is a Denison University commit. As well as Emmett O'Brien. Lewis Roseberry at John Carroll University. Trey Shepard is Arm Hurst College. And Andrew Adams is going to Kenyon College. So, in total, 12 college commits on this roster for Ohio Premier. Impressive. Mathematically, that's more than their starting 11, Turner. By one. <laughs> oh, he's done well. That's Sheck. Sheck. Tunkara, number 13 here, getting the turn. He's given them a different dynamic on the flank since he's entered the match in the second half. See if it can lead to a goal. What? This is ball going out now. We're going to see a free kick. Sorry, a throw-in coming up here for... Ohio Premier. Thrown in by Kist. A nice long throw right in the middle of the box. Good turn. Ball still in. Now cleared away by Gambone. Something you don't want to do if you're an national. You've really been in charge of this match for the last 20 minutes. And maybe arguably the last, maybe for this entire half. But what you don't want to do is give it all up here right now. You know what I mean? So got to find a way here. In these winning moments, fight this pressure. See if you can find a, an opportunity. Is now look at this. O'Brien cuts inside. Back. Oh, look at that! Shaq puts it in the middle and unable to get it to its intended target. Game is hanging on a knife's edge. It says 34, but I don't have 34 in our roster. So if anyone at home can tell me who 34 is, that'd be great. Athletus. Cleared up by Reed Dennis. Looking towards Sebi Roy. Hello, 
And Cara. Klein finding Wisser. Ramirez. Well, that's going to be a foul. So Keegan Conley goes down. Thirty-four is Luca Romanelli. Seven minutes to go. All comes in. Baker. All deflected on its way. Hard physical play on this near side. Being held up as kissed. And they call a foul. I don't know if I agree with that call. I'm, I'm not saying that there wasn't some physicality there. I just don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, this is, these young men are all going to go on to college here next year. You're just getting it. Physicality is part of the game. So they say. <laughs> Conley switches the point of attack. Shoya in traffic. Plays it back. Oh, good work. And now here, three on two. 3v2, what we got? Not played well, as you can see there. Zach Rollins, he tried to. Nah, they really didn't expand their shape east west at all, so too comfortably defended that moment. I think a little bit more width, a little faster, they might have solved that problem. Now here comes the counterattack, Nationals. Losing the ball once again. This one just inside the 18. This one actually hits off of Mears. It's going to go out. Yeah, often you see a 3v2 turned into a 2v2 by good defending, but there, unfortunately, is a result of the attacking team failing to take advantage of it. You know, they, they really did not use that moment in the way they could have. No, they did not, as this one will be thrown in here on that far side by the Nationals. Time running out here for both these teams, currently in a 1-1 deadlock. Ball put in towards Sebi Roy, and that one headed away. Ball back up into the box, ahead on that from Roy, and McClan is right there. You know, you're talking about statistics, Turner. Jose Mourinho often said, yeah, set pieces are important, but what's more important happens much more often are transitional moments. And that's what we saw there. I mean, that 3v2 was largely resultant of they won the ball, they got it in a nice area, they had numbers around it, and they, and they just failed to exploit it. So if you're talking about bang for your buck on coaching, you know, there's a real argument to be made that coaching the transition is going to give you many more chances to be successful than coaching set pieces. Sure, you're tied up. Two defenders. He'll go down. So a free kick coming up here for the Nationals. Klein will put this one back in. Ball comes in right towards McClan. He'll have one of the easiest catches of his life. <laughs> <laughs> That's well said. I mean, if you're going to go one contested, I mean, I'd take those all day. Absolutely. You know, I, I would love to have seen Sebi Roy. Look at this. Distribution off Sebi of it, Roy. Though. Places the ball. Out comes McClan. Back to Sebi Roy off the line. My goodness. Ramirez slots it to Roy. He puts it on the goal line, and it is cleared away. How many times it. are we going to see that I in this game? It. 
Goalkeeper slides out. Goalkeeper becomes the first defender, the pressuring defender. This team is well coached. Ohio's second defender falls onto the goal line into a covering position and makes a play off the line. What a moment. And we have seen goal line clearances from the opening kick by this Ohio team. This is incredible. So a free kick coming up here for Ohio Premier. 88th minute. Klein gets the win. This falls to Patel. Something you don't want to do here is, again, defensively have a miscue. This is the point in the game where you don't want to have a mental breakdown. Mental lapse. That can cost you a victory. Little ping pong action back and forth. Bouncy, bouncy. Oh, Where shall it end? Over the top and headed back by Brady McGlone. Oh, solid 75 yards between the highest player in Ohio and their center back. They are stretched. This game is wide open. I think it's more a result of fatigue than desire, but nonetheless, compelling stuff. And Let's see another goal. Into Sebby Roy. Roy gets a touch and loses the ball. Now Ramirez. Ball goes out and throw in coming up here. 90th minute. I've seen yellows given for that before, but it's a good win by Patel. Extracurricular activity sometimes gets it. So thrown in. Whistler will draw the corner. So just like that. Corner kick here in the 90th minute. Put everybody in, boys. Is there any magic here? Put everybody in. Let's have a show. In the final waning moments of this game for the Nationals to get the victory. Ball comes in, goes back post. Klein goes down, no foul called. Now Reed Dennis. Let's put this one back in the mix. Now here comes a counter. You've got numbers oh, for a yes. while, Premier. Oh, yes. Up that far side. Join the party. Still in possession. This was a hit the hands, I, I, possibly. I believe. And that's going to be just outside the 18, I think, on the other side. We're going to find out if it was in the box right now. But it did hit off the hand of a Nationals line. defender. AR did not it was run Joseph to the... Joseph Chirko. Right on the line. Oof. They're, they're going to give it outside. They're going to give it outside. A dangerous counterattack. Starting with Romanelli on that far side, and now... I believe I just saw a descent yellow as well. To Tunkara. So we go from a corner on one end to possibly having a magic moment. Now a magical moment possibly here on this end for Ohio Premier. It's a 1-1 game. Referee's going to walk the 10. Kiss is going to put this one back in. Well, they might play like a corner, but he has his left foot. He's going to line this thing up. I think he's hitting it. I think he's hitting this one, too. My guess, far post. Ball kind of moved a little bit. Got to move it back. I get that right placement on the turf. Maybe like a bit of a hole, maybe, possibly. It's kissed. Lower. Through traffic! Mm. And just like that, Ohio Premier answers. They have their moment. Do they have their win? Zach Rollins gets the touch. It's 2-1. 
No other sport gives you this kind of excitement. No other sport can you defend, 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 and then find that break, get forward, and steal a result. Unreal. Unreal. So the ball coming in from Kist. And here in the 90th minute, plus two. Zach Rollins gets on the board and gives Ohio Premier a 2-1 lead. Now Sebi Roy takes like a left-footed shot from distance, and that one's going to go out. And that is going to do it here on this Sunday afternoon. The Nationals fall 2-1 to one here on this Sunday afternoon to Ohio Premier. A 90th-minute goal. A 90th-minute goal. Seals the deal here for Ohio Premier, and they steal a 2-1 victory on this Sunday afternoon. And, and, and Alex, before we head out of here, I mean, we talked about this. You know, they're, the, the Nationals, for the better part of this second half, really in control of this game, maintaining possession. And just like that, a free kick here at the end of this game. A great ball low from Kist into Zach Rollins, gets the touch, gets the goal. I don't play a lot of golf, but I've been on a course before and taken an ugly shot, and a wise old man came up to me and said, that's why they don't put video on a golf scorecard. It doesn't matter how it gets there, and soccer's the same. It is 2-1, Ohio has won, nobody cares how, nobody cares why, and they found a way to do it, and that's why they don't put video on the scorecard in our game either. And what a beautiful game to watch. What a beautiful game it was. So that's the final score here. 2-1 in favor of Ohio Premier. That is three games for us here on the Michigan Soccer Network. Six in total today. 12 in total for the weekend. We want to thank Ohio Premier and all of you that tuned in and watched this weekend. We promise you we've got more coverage coming your way. Whether you're an ECNL, boys soccer, girls soccer, doesn't matter. We've got a lot more coming your way. For all of our production crew, Sam Fisher, our producer, uh, our camera operator, Nathan Turner, uh, Zoe and Brianna Turner on graphics, our other crew, Ryan Gagnon, also along with uh, Alex Johnson and Giovanni Mosseri. My name is Jonathan Turner. Alex Lubianski was my color. We want to say thank you. Have a great rest of your weekend. It's Masters. Go watch some of that if you want to nap. Otherwise, have a great rest of your weekend. And so long, everybody. We'll see you next time for more soccer. In for Bacharach, and that goes in! Hugo Bacharach gives Flint City a 3-2. Buckley, all oh, the ball falls to Buckley. What I want with Etheridge, what a save! Welcome into the first ever MSN All-State Media Day for Girls Soccer. Jonathan Turner alongside Dan Stickrett. Ball comes in, a good hit! Effectively today here on the Michigan Soccer Network, we are launching our new division of player recruitment videos. Mario Canoe now finds Sock. Finds Sock's got a left-footed banger. He shoots!